Call Time spoiler season has just started, and already Wizards is flirting with disaster. <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to talk about a brand new card from the upcoming Kaldheim set. And I gotta say, these spoilers, they're wetting my appetite. But the first card that I saw today made me go, whoa, whoa, all right, this, this could be a big problem. Could be, they're flirting with disaster in this case. So, to make sure we're on the same page, what we're actually gonna have to do before we look at the spoiler card is look at an older magic card that will kind of give you an idea of why I went, oh, hey, what's going on? So, we're gonna look at an older card by the name of Birthing Pod. Now, this card came from New Phyrexia, where the Phyrexians, by the way, I'm telling stories about the Phyrexians over on my lore channel, and there's a premiere of a lore video today you are not gonna wanna miss, because the story is getting dynamite. Anyways, the Phyrexians had basically slowly taken over all of Mirrodin, and now they have these Birthing Pods set up. So what is a Birthing Pod? Well. It's one Phyrexian green and three. And if you don't know what a Phyrexian green mana symbol is, that can be paid either with green mana or with two life. Functionally, making this thing's casting cost, if you don't play green, into three generic mana and two life. So it's only three to put out and you pay two life. If you've used shock lands or fetch lands or anything like that, you're gonna know that paying life is not that big a deal. So, what does the birthing pod do? Well, for you tap it, you spend one and a green Phyrexian mana, tap it, sacrifice a creature, then you get to search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. Oh my lord, that last line where they say do it at sorcery speed, that's the only thing that stops cards like these from being the most bonkers things around. But even with that restriction, Birthing Pod proved to be a very, very, very strong card to the point where it elicited bans. Surprise, Birthing Pod gets a ban. What are you gonna do? With that kind of a power level, it's obvious, right? First of all, it's a repeatable tutor effect, right? Secondly, this is accessible to everybody. Because they used Phyrexian mana, this may as well have been a colorless artifact. Yes, the activation is aligned to green, which slows you down a little bit, but again, you can just pay two life in place of that part of the activation. And so it's just one mana, pay two life, sack a creature, go get another creature. You can use it over and over and over. It's a great little engine to grab different combo pieces or ramp yourself up into insanity, right? Like, it's a very, very useful card. Repeatable tutor effects are very, very strong. And considering you can just get creatures that have come into play triggers, and then you don't care, and each time you do this, you're getting a better casting cost that you can move up the chain with, right? So you have this insane scenario where you can just keep getting more and more value out of the card. That's essentially what Birthing Pod is. It's a value engine with, well, it's just too strong. It's just too good. So it got banned. Now we have the brand new card we're going to talk about today. You might notice that there's a little bit of similarity and that is the Pyre of Heroes. So this is two colorless for an artifact that has a activation of two. It says tap it, Sacrifice a creature, search your library for a creature card that shares a creature type with the sacrifice creature and has a converted mana cost equal to one plus that creature's converted mana cost. Uh, let's just take a moment and appreciate how convoluted and complex uh, the language of an ability can be. Because by just trying to restrict this to the same creature type, it makes it so much more of a word salad. Search your library for a creature card that shares a creature type with the sacrificed creature and has converted mana cost equal to one plus that creature's converted mana cost. That, my friends, is a massive mouthful. Shuffle your library, activate this, uh, activate this ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery. So, it activates at the exact same speed. You might notice there's some, there's some strong parallels between these cards. 
anybody can play this card, right? There is, it's not restricted to a particular color. It has a really cheap activation cost. What Wizards tries to do when they create something that's too powerful is they try and revisit the concept. And I'm 100% for that. You know what I mean? If you go, we make this card, we think it's balanced. Whoa, we watched everybody mess around with it. This is not balanced. Okay, uh, yeah, we need to nerf that card. Let's try and go back to the same vein of design, but redo it in a way that works a little bit better. So there obviously is a distinctive difference when you turn this into a tribal concept, right? And by that, I mean like anything where you care about creature types of one type specifically, that's like a tribal feel, right? So if you're playing an elf deck, a minotaur deck, that's a tribal deck. So this is a tribal card. And actually it leads to a hilarious name that I saw when people were talking about this. I don't remember who it was, but somebody went, cause remember birthing pod, right? So they went, so this is, this is tribal birthing pod or a tripod. And I'm like, all right, that's, that's a silly name. So for me, this card shall be known as the tripod. So Wizards of the Coast has tried to do a number of different birthing pod iterations since birthing pod, but they've kind of leaned back in terms of the power, which I know sounds crazy with the way Wizards designs cards now, where it's just like, everything's super powerful, but they did lean back, make a few other attempts at this, but none of them really went anywhere. They never had quite the, the sizzle, the zazz of the birthing pod. But Pyre of Heroes, this is the card that feels like, like on the surface, when you look at it, your brain goes, okay, this is a fixed birthing pod. It's only tribal. You can only use this with the same creature types. But at the same time, this is incredibly inexpensive to put out. It's a reusable tutor effect that will happen again and again and again. And this one, unlike Birthing Pod, doesn't have the Phyrexian mana stumbling block. And by that, I mean with the Birthing Pod's activation, yes, you can pay two life instead of the green mana. But once you run lower on life, paying that life becomes far more disastrous. And there's a certain point where you literally can't pay life anymore. So you must be playing green to utilize it, which makes it a little more restrictive. Whereas the Pyre of Heroes does not suffer from that. You will be able to use this as many times as you want with no real cost to yourself. At a total of four mana to put out and activate for the first time, this is actually a really, really solid card. Now, is it too powerful? I don't know. That's why I said they're flirting with disaster, right? Where it's like, this could be disastrous. It's not as obvious to me as a card like Fires of Inventions was, where I'm like, okay, this is insane. What are you doing here? I look at the Pyre of Heroes and I go, it feels like you might be going too strong, but I don't look at it and instantly go, what are you thinking? I'm genuinely curious to see how restrictive the tribal aspect of it is. Are people just going to use weird, cheap little changeling creatures to chain into anything? Like with Magic having so many cards, there are workarounds for everything. Do I think this will become a problem in Standard? Maybe. The way that Standard operates now, with all the broken nonsense they make, you know what I mean? We've seen all kinds of craziness. Think of <laughs> all kinds of craziness. And this could just be another tool in a deck's toolbox. If, if this is only used to get one particular, like, I only use this to get one card from my deck, but that card is so overwhelmingly broken, then the card, this becomes a problem as well, because it enables getting to that broken card way too easily. So the Pyre of Heroes is, de it's, it's, it's playing with Fire Sun, which is funny because that ties into the concept of the card. Conceptually, the card is really cool, right? You have a Pyre where, I mean, it's kind of dark in a way. Like Pyres are supposed to be, we're sending the dead on their way to the afterlife. But from the wording of this, you put them in while they're still alive and give them a Viking funeral. And then just like set it on fire and harvest their soul energy like, I'm going to take the essence of this warrior and use it to go and summon up this other more powerful warrior. Like, there's some really dark and crazy flavor behind this card. And the artwork is pretty funky, man. It's actually the weird little setup reminds me of this, this thing they had when I was in Boy Scouts. They had this, like, pre-built kind of fire base. It was, I don't know, Boy Scouts is a little bit weird. But yeah, this has that same 
kind of vibe, right? But you can see the life energy that's just radiating. Like, how does it work? Do you ignite the pyre and then like in a flash, the summoned heroes show them, ha I was over in Mexico having a soda, but you guys set Billy on fire and here I am. I don't, I, <laughs> I don't get 100% how it works, but you know what, while we're talking about the artwork, I do want to mention, I've used the extended border artwork version of the card. Wizards has finally changed how extended borders worked. The previous extended borders actually shrunk the artwork of the card. So if you looked at an extended border version, it was like they used like the zoom in function, right? So you actually had less of the artwork, which felt very, very confusing when you have the card stretched all the way up, but you get less artwork. So now going forwards, the extended art versions are actually going to have a fuller version of the picture, which I like because that's how it should be, right? It doesn't make sense otherwise. Either way, I wanted to share my thoughts on Pyre of Heroes. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that has come out, including a bunch of new theme and set booster specific cards that look really awesome, but there's a lot to it. So I'm actually thinking about doing a live stream tonight where we just kind of go through all the spoilers. So keep your eye out. We might have our normal chill stream tonight, or it might be a focusing on Kaldheim spoiler stream. Either way, you're invited to come out. Speaking of invitations, I have a brand new lore video that is premiering on my lore channel in a few hours. By the time you see this video, it'll be coming out in a couple of hours. So come on over and check it out. The story is absolutely amazing. I'll be there in the chat because with the premiere, you can actually converse, which is pretty neat. And yeah, so I'll toss the link to that premiere up here and I will see you over there, my friends. Thanks for coming by.